Lindsay and Matt are running in a one-mile race. They have both run the same distance so far. Write a fraction that shows how far Lindsay could have run. Write a different fraction that shows how far Matt could have run. Construct a math argument to support your answer. Let's first think a minute. Will the fractions refer to the same whole? Yes, they will refer to the same whole. Matt and Lindsay are running in the same race. They says a one mile race. Will the fractions represent the same part or different parts of the whole? And how do you know? They will refer to the same part because Matt and Lindsay have run the same distance so far. So how can you find fractions that represent the same part? It says write a different fraction that shows how far Matt could have run. How can that happen? You might use fraction strips or number lines to find equivalent fractions. So what I'm going to do is make two number lines. They represent the same whole. So I'm going to pick two different fractions. So I think about how many parts I want to split up my one mile in. So let's take um, this first number line and split it into four equal parts. So I always start at my halfway point when I have an even denominator and then I do the rest. Let's double check and make sure we have four parts. One, two, three, four. Yep. And this one, how about some eighths? We'll split this one into eighths, and again, I'm going to start at halfway, because it's an even denominator. And now we're going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. Let me just fix this one line here, so we can tell that that's the one mark. Okay, so now we want to pick equivalent fractions. So I'm going to look over here, and we have three different spots where we can see equivalent fractions. So I'm going to just pick one of those. Let's mark right here. Now we need to label that fraction. This is 3 fourths. And this is 6 eighths. So what, let's say Lindsay is our first fraction. She went 3 fourths of a mile. And Matt went 6 eighths. Now let's construct an argument to support our answer. Lindsay has run three-fourths of a mile, and Matt has run four-eighths of a mile. Two-fourths and four-eighths show the same part of the whole. They show Matt and Lindsay have run the same distance. So here is my argument. Since I see that they are both the same point on my number line, the same distance from zero, and we're talking about the same whole. Lindsay and Matt have run the same distance. Three-fourths and six-eighths are equivalent fractions. Clara and Anna are making rugs. The rugs will be the same size. Clara has finished three-fourths of her rug, and Anna has finished three-eighths of her rug. Who has finished more of her rug? Conjecture. 
Clara has finished a greater portion of her rug. A conjecture is basically a nice fancy word for your answer. This is the conclusion that you are drawing. How can I explain why my conjecture is correct? You need to construct an argument to justify your conjecture. A conjecture is a statement that you think is true. It needs to be proved. So here's the thinking. How can I construct an argument? Use this as a resource when you are making a conjecture. I can use numbers, objects, drawings, or actions correctly to explain my thinking. This is a way to show how you got your answer. Make sure my explanation is simple, complete, and easy to understand. I will use drawings and numbers to explain my thinking. These number lines represent the same whole, 0 to 1. The number lines represent 0 to 1, the same whole. 1 is divided into eighths. 1 is divided into fourths. The number lines show that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. So 3 fourths is greater than eighths. The conjecture is correct. Use numbers. To construct another math argument to justify the conjecture above that we just looked at, think about how you can look at the numerator and the denominator. So our two fractions that we just looked at were 3 fourths and 3 eighths. The two fractions have the same numerator. Since they have the same numerator, I can compare the denominators. I know the fraction with the lesser denominator is, great, is the greater fraction. Since 4 is less than 8, I know that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. And here's how I write it out in words. I can look at the denominators to compare. Since I know that the fraction with the lesser denominator is the greater fraction, I know that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. Paul and Anna are eating burritos. The burritos are the same size. Paul ate four-sixths of a burrito. Anna ate two-thirds of a burrito. Conjecture, Paul and Anna ate the same amount. Draw a diagram to help you justify this conjecture. So you are trying to prove that this conjecture is correct, that they ate the same amount. We will start by making two diagrams like this. I'm making two number lines. So 0 and 1. Now my first fraction is in sixths, so I need to divide my number line into six equal parts. Once I have done that, I need to mark four sixths on that fraction. Right here is four sixths. My other fraction divides the number line into three equal parts. So I will divide my fraction into three equal parts and mark two thirds. So now I have drawn the diagram to justify my conjecture. Is the conjecture correct? Construct an argument to justify the answer. This means answer the question. Is this correct? Did Paul and Anna eat the same amount? Yes, they ate the same amount because 
both points are at the same place on the number line. Since it refers to the same whole of the same whole, which is a burrito, four sixths and two thirds are equivalent fractions. And here's how I write my argument. Yes, four sixths and two thirds refer to the same size whole. They are equivalent fractions, so they ate the same amount.